The Republicans, as we know, they passed this ghoulish and horrific health care bill, and their model for it is to lie about it. Um, just really quick quote Brian Boiler. The A, the A, the, uh, because in this clip you're going to hear some of these lies. The AACA, the AHCA cuts Medicaid and spending by hundreds of billions of dollars. A Congressional Budget Office analysis of an earlier version of the bill found that the uh, bill would reduce Medicaid rolls by 5 million people within a year and 14 million people over 10 years. The Medicaid provisions have not changed since the publication of that impact estimate. This is the most consequential black is white lie of the four because it violates Donald Trump's repeated campaign promise not to cut Medicaid and because of the degree contempt it shows for millions of poor people. And of course, Paul Ryan has echoed it all over the place. Uh, then, of course, there's uh, pre-existing conditions. The truth is, is that the bill creates multiple hoops for people with pre-existing conditions to jump through in order to avoid massive price discrimination and no guarantee that any insurance availability on the market will all be offered will be affordable to them or provide them with adequate coverage. Um, and then we know about the the risk pool and the subsidy, the money that Uptick got in is not even remotely enough to protect people in that position. So they really, and, and, and it should be also said, there is no doubt that a version of this can pass the Republican Senate. And there's already talk from the Freedom Caucus that they're willing to accept more center-right proposals from the Senate in order to move a bill that will actually be passed. So it's looking like their line in the sand was what passed out of the House, not the final actual Yeah, they package. get to stand behind that to their they crazies. Get, exactly. They get to talk about the House bill, which is as ghoulish and as cruel and as horrific as you can imagine for their insane people and on all their media hits and all the crazies, as Matt says. But they already know that the Senate is going to craft something which, you know, it's just going to be Obama. It, it's best Obamacare except significantly worse, but not quite as bad as the House bill. And in any scenario, worse quality health insurance, less subsidies, less Medicaid, worse health care for America. It's and it'll just get a, worse as years go by. And it'll get worse as years go by because, of course, they're going to offload it to the future. So the question is really just how much is the damage going to be, which is why it is vital to be bombarding all of these people in every way, shape, and form. Actual letters, emails, calls, and if any of them have the courage to hold town halls, you do it. Uh, and here is um, Congressman, uh, I believe his name is Re uh, Rod Blum, and he is has a technique for his town halls. He is having some town halls in Iowa. He's a horrible human who voted for this health care bill and he's taking steps to make sure that people from outside of his district do not come to his town hall in cedar rapids now we'll see briefly that that move is not protecting him from the hard questions anyways but here he is talking with Chief Investigative Reporter Joseph Scheinblum for uh, ABC affiliate KCRG TV in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. He's explaining why he's keeping his town halls closed circuited, um, but it's going to lead to an interesting line of questioning from Scheinblum, which is going to lead to a temper tantrum from Blum. Let's take a look. All right. Congressman, I'm sure you know the drill. So today, Pause it. you're having your first. I should just say for everybody listening, I don't know what the context is, but the congressman is at some type of school. So adding to the drama of this interview is he's surrounded by a bunch of young kids. <laughs> so anyways, go ahead. Town hall meeting since January. What are you expecting? Well, the discussion of the issues is like typical. I'm not expecting, I guess, anything one way or the other. We've held uh, tele-town hall meetings uh, extensively over the last two years where we'll have 6,000 people on the line. And uh, so today we'll reach 600 people. Tell the town halls we've reached 6,000 people. Uh, so uh, it would be a typical town hall. It'll be lots of questions and uh, uh, lots of answers. So one thing that's a little less typical is you want to see IDs. 
for this. Can I ask why that decision was made? Because we want people from the first district to be at our town halls. We don't want people from outside of the first district. We don't need people from Chicago there or Des Moines there or, or Minneapolis there. Um, I don't represent them. They should go talk to their representatives at their town hall meetings. I don't know why they would want to be at one of my town hall meetings to start with. Well, I think some would make the case that you represent all Iowans. The decisions that you make impact all Iowans. So shouldn't all Iowans have a voice at the table or at least have the option to? <laughs> I don't represent all Iowans. I represent my, the first district of Iowa. That'd be, that'd be like saying, uh, shouldn't I be able to, even though I live in Dubuque, go vote in Iowa City during the election because I'd like to vote in that district instead. Would you still take donations from a Republican <laughs> in Iowa City? I mean, <laughs> I'm, 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 <laughs> we haven't even, we just started. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. <laughs> we, 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 I need mean, to sit here and just, just badger right, me. Right. We, we, we just asked why you wanted to do the interview. That was, that was it. Congressman, you don't, come on. Take, take a seat. Congressman, I, I insist. Let's, let's talk about. Come on, Congressman. Let's, let's talk about the issues here. It's awesome because some of the kid, like one, there's this one girl in the back, this little girl, she looks like mortified because she, because it's uncomfortable because the con the congressman's having a tantrum. The reporter's playing it cool. Like, come on. Hey, look, dude, I'm sorry. You walked into it. I nailed you. At least pretend like you're an adult, let alone like an actual member of the United States Congress. And then this one kid, as he's walking out, he just stops to do like a little dance, like, like the ha ha adults having tension dance. <laughs> And that's pretty awesome. Now, you can see why he wouldn't want people to come to his town hall because, of course, he just voted for a bill that would conservatively probably kick about at least 24 million people off of their health insurance. It would allow uh, states and insurance companies to discriminate against people with pre existing conditions, uh, which includes everything from heart disease to, of course, rape. Um, it's a really grotesque piece of legislation. And even though he uh, did everything he could to not face accountability, um, if you're from out of the district, he'll obviously take your money but not your questions. But here was a woman at the town hall who does live in his district, and she's concerned about uh, people with pre-existing conditions, the high-risk pools. And this is so interesting because what he does is he appeals to her self-interest and then she does something which is very jarring for a Republican congressman, which is mention it, have a sense of empathy and concern about her fellow citizens. I just had a heart attack two months ago. I have high blood pressure. I have diabetes. My health care plan is wonderful. But are you in the individual market, or are you? A We're Medicare, and we have our individual. No change. Medicare, no change. Zero change. How about the individual market? You seem like a responsible person. You'll keep your, courage, your coverage current. No changes. No changes. All the other people who have these pre-existing conditions, and maybe they can't afford a good health care plan um, besides Medicare. That's, that's what the 140... You talk about the individual market? That's what the $130 billion from the federal government is for, is to buy down premiums. In the bucket. Do you realize how <laughs> many millions of people? Yeah, $130 billion is a fair amount of money. Yeah. Billion, not million. Billion. Billion. It, it, it won't last forever, and I can't, I can't possibly, let's say in eight years, that, that's depleted. Government will re replenish it. I can't forever see them saying... Well, no, I, I probably won't be there. I probably won't be there then. They don't want me there either. <laughs> so um, she walks away from him in disgust. Uh, that tiny subsidy from the federal government to help people with pre-existing conditions is obviously entirely insufficient, and the new rules allow states to waive those conditions, and insurance companies can jack your fees up again. So she walks away with the look of contempt and disgust that is perfectly deserved for that squirrely congressman. When people know they're being condescended to and, yeah. and lied to, they don't appreciate it.
Uh, and so we saw Faso yesterday telling a woman with a tumor to her face that he would not vote to take away her insurance. Lied to her. Sociopath. And he's lying about the subsidy right there. Senator Chris Murphy, who is a progressive senator from Connecticut, but not, you know, certainly known more for gun control, some interesting ideas on foreign policy. He recently told a New Republic podcast that if Republicans keep lying, they're just going to put he's going to go with Medicare for all if Trump passes and that he is utterly shocked by just the sheer volume of lies that Republicans are telling about their health care bill. The political establishment is always very reluctant to call something or someone a lie or call someone a liar. But I don't see any way around it with Kevin McCarthy and Paul Ryan to go there and consistently claim that no one's going to lose their health insurance because of, bill, of a bill that the CBO scores as a loss to the number of uninsured of 24 million or that no one with pre-existing conditions will be denied coverage, which is plainly not the case, especially in the new version. I don't see that as anything else than a lie, a statement that's untrue, that is knowingly untrue, and is made to try to affect public debate. So I think we've got to call these guys out right now. If Democrats get control of the House and the Senate and Republicans whip away health coverage for 24 million people, we're going to do whatever it takes to restore health care to people who have had it taken away. If they actually allow insurance companies to discriminate against six people, then they're going to lose majorities of the House and the Senate in 2018, and we'll have the numbers potentially necessary to restore these benefits. And he went on to endorse the possibility of Medicare for all, which is, of course, the only solution to stop this bullshit. There's no companies whose profit motives are built on denying you care is not a sustainable model for people getting delivered care. It's a great model for parasitically extracting all sorts of middleman fees, but not on delivering quality coverage. Hi, folks. It's Sam Cedar. You know me from just a minute ago. Listen, uh, we've had a problem on YouTube. Let me make a graphic uh, visualization. Uh, back in March, our revenue and the ads that were monetized was a lot, like here. And now, over the course of actually within a day into April, it's down to about here. Now, this is just a artist rendering, but that's basically it. Uh, we were uh, here, and now we're here. Uh, that's because of some uh, YouTube thing where advertisers were concerned on being on hate sites. And, of course, uh, we're a news uh, organization that sometimes talks about hateful people, and we got caught up in their algorithm. I thought it would be fixed by now. It's not. We need your help to keep giving you free content on uh, YouTube. Uh, we don't have the advertiser support that we had even back, you know, here. Um, so we're looking for your help. Go to our Patreon site. Give a couple of bucks. Literally, you could give a couple, and it would be very helpful. Head over there. Here's the link right here or down there. It's somewhere around here. Find it and go help us out. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of the show.